Florida, Colorado, Las Vegas, or Hawaii, Dr. Hunter S. Thompson stands prepared to turn out his own brand of twisted craziness. There is a table at the back of the ballroom featuring his books such as Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Buckley as eliciting the same kind of admiration one would feel for a streaker at Queen Victoria. Berkeley in the 60s, 
who has a lot of grudges to settle, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's appointed uh, Attorney General, and when this a genuine fascist, a uh, uh, working, uh, working Nazi out of Colorado, Joe Coors. <laughs> even half considered to replace me as the, uh, the person who works with the Reagan on a day-to-day -day basis in the White House. I think he was turned down, but even though he put a, a, a billboard outside of the window of the Reagan could see on the, if you looked uh, sweeping his gaze, sweeping across the lawn, there's a Coors billboard somewhere. Just to remind him, but, but we're, I think we're, we're talking about a, uh, a situation that is, is going to clearly get more dangerous because, uh, I don't believe this president can accept any more humiliations by Arabs. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm sure, uh, yeah, the, the, the division of the uh, president of Egypt standing in the uh, uh, press room of the White House uh, flogging the, the president. <laughs> and uh, it fits in that the uh, Israelis must leave Lebanon and that the PLO, in fact, must come back in, uh, was an unusual one. And I don't think that the, I think basically that the people in this country will accept a, uh, a fascist president. <laughs> as long as he does a good job. <laughs> and you get the, the thing, uh, uh, say, comparing Grenada to uh, Lebanon. Nobody argued about Grenada. And it really wasn't a, a, an ugly war, it's not a war at all. But I don't think people in this country were ready to see us uh, chased out of the Middle East and have the president hiding in the, some weird compound in Santa Barbara <laughs> in, in the entire week. People appearing on the uh, TV screen with their black bars across their eyes. Is it, uh, is, Advisors. No one wanted to take responsibility for that policy. <laughs> and all we could see of the president was uh, at the far end of some uh, telescopic lens, a uh, half white horse running in circles with his old man clean to it. And Larry Speed's people in the White House trying to make sense of what the president either wanted to say or couldn't. <laughs> because the Joint Chiefs of Staff had, uh, in effect, overruled that one level. And it's very dangerous to have a president who is even more militant uh, and more demented than uh, the generals that we... <laughs> no, it's basically a, a, your bottom line right-wing uh, militarist. And every one of them was opposed all along that publicly to the uh, Lebanese uh, fiasco. And I think four more years of that, of using the military for political purposes would be, uh, as a gambler, I would bet that we would not get away with it because uh, one more uh, defeat like Lebanon, uh, which we're looking for right now with the uh, trying to warn the Iranians to uh, not blow up the Straits of Hormuz and kill off half the world's oil supply, we're, we're committed to doing, doing something there and that something could be uh, the use of tactical nuclear weapons. Because we clearly can't uh, fight these Arabs. There are not enough Marines to go in there and control uh, the Lebanese. And uh, the, these new uh, missile launching destroyers have built the cost of 50 billion or a billion dollars to these 50 of them. Have a uh, success ratio in target practice of something like 1 in 19 shots. <laughs> We're not prepared. Uh, you, you saw what happened with Lieutenant Goodman. They sent planes in after the battleships couldn't hit the, the target, and the planes were shot down. So I, I and looking back to uh, Carter's invasion of Iran the first time, they were trying to get the hostages out. <laughs> we, we've had bad luck in the Middle East. <laughs> it's a uh, yeah, it's an open question whether the country would vote for war. If it were, uh, if it came up as a uh, as a, uh, a proposition of the ballot, <laughs> I'm not sure. But I think, uh, there would not be much of a vote in favor of a losing war. And I think that's the, that's the the point we've come to with Reagan.
where uh, if, he, uh, if he's not fighting winning anymore, that's fine. But the evidence suggests he's not going to, and therefore we have to consider another hideous uh, defeat and uh, bring nuclear weapons into it. I've been talking for way too long. <laughs> Let me. Uh, well, can we, can we talk about the, uh, the Pulitzer story that was in Rolling Stone a while back? And, uh, can you give us any follow-up remarks on that, or just some of your basic impressions of what you saw down in West Palm Beach, Florida? It's hard for me to even talk about that without uh, massive amounts of drugs.
question? Hi. <laughs> Do you enjoy writing political type of pieces more, or writing things more like Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas? <laughs>
Flint Marines out and uh, lying about it, uh, the president hiding in Santa Barbara. These are all small things, I'm sure you've heard of. But it would be funny if it only lasted for a week or so. <laughs> but the idea is this, uh, uh, this giddy old man is going to run him up <laughs> after he's reelected. And we have to also face the fact that the Republicans don't need Reagan once he gets reelected. Right now he can do anything he wants. He can wander around in a jock strap. And <laughs> uh, why they, they, they would be in serious trouble if uh, Reagan's temper or senility got out of control. Because they wouldn't get elected. Maybe they could not uh, elect George Bush on the, that sort of platform. I, I doubt the Bush would run on He's the one who called Reaganomics voodoo economics a long time ago. Everything that uh, has been said about Reagan, Reagan is being said, it's really been said before, and by people in his own party. But I, I really do think it's alarming that the, uh, the change that will occur once and if he uh, gets reelected, at that point you see a whole shift in priorities. Uh, the party doesn't need him, he doesn't need the party. And uh, I think it would be an orgy of uh, profit taking of some sort. With the assumption being that probably a Democrat would win anyway the next time around. So it would be a sort of a barricading the White House off and the uh, Treasury Department and looting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, had massive profits, a uh, variety of wars with the Nicaragua. And Mexico, Mexico was being mentioned uh, more and more as a possible oh, target. Oh, yeah. You agree with that? Oh invade those bastards. <laughs> <laughs> They've caused us enough trouble. <laughs> well, we, uh, the Russian ambassador to the country mentioned missiles in Mexico. I heard this uh, on TV one Sunday morning. Kind of a shock to hear a Russian speaking very rationally about missiles in Mexico. I was thinking, hmm, where in Mexico now? <laughs> and there's a difference between Tijuana and uh, Veracruz. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, well, Canada, we haven't done dual with Canada either. The uh, Prime Minister came out of the White House and talked about his peace initiative, and the White House leaked a uh, sort of a backstairs statement that he was really a, a degenerate dope fiend anyway. Yeah. And uh, they had nothing to do with his peace plan because he was a uh, freak fool and a, and they said a smoker of dope, right now. I, I like Trudeau, but I think he, uh, I think he has been a good prime minister. I vote for Trudeau in Canada, I think. Yeah, I, mean, I wish he were president of this country. Margaret. Yeah. 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 I, saw her, I saw her in Montreal recently, uh, and she weighs about 200 pounds, so. Doctor, over here, to your left. We're going to go right over here to the left for a question. Yo, Doctor, how did you get off the island in your last book? I was under the impression that you were stranded there with your Hawaiian friend bringing you drugs and booze, <laughs> and nobody wanted to see you. How did you get off the island? Well, you're the first person to ask that question. <laughs> a lot of questions asked about that book. Uh, I really can't. I'm not free to disclose it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a no win. That's a no win question for me. I thank you for asking it. Uh, no, any more books coming up? Oh, yeah. I'm late on another one, though. I'm uh, late on another one about Cubans and, uh, and violence and the Keys. I seem to be getting more and more into Cubans in South America. And <laughs> Cocaine. Well, I've been. I've been. I found the cocaine is uh, far too dangerous a drug. No, it's not cocaine so much that's dangerous. It's the people who do it. <laughs> you know, cocaine has been around for a long time, and as long as one percent of the population is are, are just a simple coke fiend, that's uh, that's fine. <laughs> you know, then it's just an eccentric tick. It's been around. It's uh, like Negro musicians or something. <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, it's COVID. But when 50% of the population <laughs> turns into coke fiends, or even Negro musicians for that matter, <laughs> it's not a qualitative problem.
want to do it. And, uh, or if the people who are into a uh, 50% of the population drink gin all the time. There's nothing wrong with gin. But uh, if I knew that half of you were seriously drunk on gin, though, and if the 50% of the I may be too. Yeah. How many people here are actually drunk right now? Yeah! It's still only about 10%. See, the game would change if uh, 50 people, or 50% of you were real drunk. <laughs> and uh, that would make Jen a dangerous drug. <laughs> I think uh, as long as both games were restricted to the uh, eccentric few, like me, <laughs> like, uh, handguns and swords and things like that, <laughs> as long as the few eccentrics carry them around. It's all right, but everybody's carrying swords and handguns or daggers. You know, bites of gin, little bags of cocaine. <laughs> Abel! Yeah, I've been able to put them up. Shoot, bastard. Let's go over to this side for a question. Uh, as an acknowledged expert in pioneering new fields of uh, wasting away your leisure time, <laughs> how do you cope with finally being bored with the basic 10 drugs? What recommendation do you turn to? <laughs> I believe that the 
the thinking of the Reagan administration is precisely that. That people don't want to uh, have to... Uh, well, to question the president's uh, competence, or uh, they, they, uh, their thinking is that he's better off appearing to be some combination of John Wayne and the Sun King, and, and not caring about what goes on, being in Santa Barbara when the Marines are being chased out of Lebanon. The assumption that this administration is that people, yes, uh, would rather see that, would rather have a, uh, uh, a sort of symbolic monarch is a president, then uh, they have some president like Carter who's constantly embroiled in details and uh, staying up all night to uh, planning invasions. And uh, meanwhile, letting all hundreds of thousands of Cubans into the country, that was a bad house. That was one of the highest kind of the I've ever seen in politics. And I, I like those people when they were friends with them. <laughs> but the uh, assumption is that Car uh, what caused Carter the presidency was uh, that he was perceived as being too busy and he had, uh, he had sort of dirty hands with the everyday business and politics. And that what the American people want is really uh, somebody. <laughs> That's true, too. It's, uh, you do wonder why uh, we are the only uh, nation in the world that is just afflicted with every, every drug that comes along with every bed uh, is taken up over here as a, a routine kind of habit by uh, <laughs> No, no, there's no nation in the world be, uh, has been uh, as affected by waves of weird drugs as this one. We do uh, use almost all of them. And, uh, you know, the, I'm not sure that the French are certainly not free of uh, the heroin problem. But uh, they don't worry about it. The government doesn't worry about it. They don't have people prowling the streets all the time, locking up junkies. And, and they, they wonder why we're so alarmed about uh, the drug imports from all over the world. And uh, I think there are people in other countries thinking, what the hell is going on over there? You know, uh, why is uh, the, uh, the opium poppy such a problem with, uh, in Washington? We don't care about it. What, uh, and that's a, that's a question that's going to be answered, I think, in the, the election, the presidential election. If the given, given six months to expose himself uh, more and more, uh, well, shamefully, yeah, in very embarrassing measures, the president is not going to get smarter between now and uh, <laughs> He's not going to get any younger. He's not going to change his mind about anything. And uh, there's, there's no way they're going to be able to... Uh, in fact, any sort of change, uh, even with situations like the President, the Secretary of the Treasury, and the National Economics Advisor are almost getting in a fist fight in Congress <laughs> over the uh, deficit, we're in for a, uh, a pretty bumpy ride to uh, election time. I think what they had in mind in the White House was uh, having all this thing come apart six months from now. The market crashing, uh, wars in Iran and Mexico, uh, just let us get re-elected first. I think this is Lebanon they took up by surprise. And it was a signal. You hear these signals at night if you're a politics chubby like I am. And the phone rings, and it's people you haven't heard from for a while. Everybody, uh, after four or five hours of a night like that Lebanon crisis, you begin to get a sense from the people who call that uh, there may be more fun in running against this president than uh, we thought last week, that he can be beaten. And in fact, uh, that's probably a perception of mine that hadn't been real strong until recently. I thought to my uh, chagrin, whatever that's a bad word for it, but uh, they seem to be so slick that no matter what I thought, uh, they were still going to win by 64 or more. I don't think that anymore. I think they're not nearly as slick as we thought. And we, we took it for granted they were dumb, greedy, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and mean. But it appeared for a while, it went, let's say, the case of Grenada, where they, uh, they actually launched an uh, invasion and uh, made it appear that American power, military might, was not only effective, but uh, uh, cheap, 
colorful. <laughs> I, was, I went there. I was in there for spent about six weeks with the 82nd Airborne down there. And it was nice. It was wonderful. I think about eight Marines were killed in combat related uh, incidents. And that happens every day on every exercise. Uh, oh yeah, one person a day is moderate. Like, we, we should check the casualty figures for Big Pine, too. Uh, that's taken for granted in Fort Bragg, I think that's probably the case. Have you ever had to play with hand grenades and uh, lambs and bazookas and landmines? People are going to be killed. <laughs> Just learning how to do it. But, uh, <laughs> they did sell Grenada as, a, as evidence that the U.S. can still uh, Use the carrot and the stick at the same time. <laughs> but uh, essentially, Grenada was a, a PR move to take attention off of the disaster that had happened in Iran two days earlier when 239 Marines were killed by that one blast in the, uh, the uh, compound. The uh, invasion of Grenada, which is essentially just another exercise that had been planned and rehearsed for a while. Uh, was done, and that took a, it was a very skillful move. It took public opinion, the public focus away from uh, a genuine disaster in Lebanon. It had been since the Battle of Bull Run, or Iwo, Iwo Jima, or maybe even uh, Gettysburg, since that many Americans have been killed in combat in one day. And no day, no single day in the Vietnam War were 239 American casualties taken. And within 24 hours, that was the focus on that was uh, changed very skillfully to uh, the peaceful and the happy invasion of Grenada, 10 to 1 public approval. But it didn't last very long. We, went, we had to go back to Lebanon. That didn't go away. And I think it was George Will that made a uh, right wing columnist who speaks for the White House, a nice guy and a smart guy, who said uh, that what the administration has learned. Uh, lately, now, is that if we're going to play around with the use of military, American military power in the world, we had better stick to places like Grenada. <laughs> that comes from the president's uh, man who uh, helped him rehearse for the Carter debates in 1980 election, which I, 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 uh, I guess fine. I, I, I'm a bit partisan myself in politics, but we just want to keep in mind that that's what George Will. A spokesman for the White House has said, and that's pretty uh, alarming that we can't use American military might anywhere except in, uh, it's like saying and beating uh, India over uh, <laughs> you know, some surfing community. Because <laughs> <laughs> we can't take on the, uh, the mean powers in the world that they're ready to take us on. So that's, that's a change. And the, we, it isn't as if we can, uh, our final. Uh, option is just to say, well, the hell with them. We can't even understand their goddamn language. Man, pull the thing, and then they'll, they'll go away. They're just their or something else. They won't go away, and uh, the thing doesn't always work. So, and I believe this is a change in uh, in our attitude uh, these beasts the rest of the world, and it's going to be real different. Nobody in those countries ever assumed that we couldn't make our policies work, and we couldn't scare the rest of the world into accepting them, whether they liked it or not. That's changing now. And uh, it's going to send a, a wave of nervousness across the country. During an election year, that's unhealthy. So, uh, we wanted to go over here for a question. Dr. Thompson, considering you're the consummate political junkie, is there any chance of you repeating your 1970 run in Aspen for sheriff or any other higher office in Colorado? <laughs> Not nearly as much fun as to get involved in it 
in a more criminal way. I <laughs> yeah, I, I would. Uh, I enjoy being part of the conspiratorial aspect of politics, <laughs> but not up. Not no. Not making. This is as much as, much, as close as I come to making a speech. I don't believe I've convinced a lot of you to vote for me. <laughs> That's not what I was trying to do. Okay, on this side, another question. Uh, Doctor, you've been described as a uh, world-class paranoid. I wonder if you My question is, uh, is this due to uh, your uh, chemical recreation, or are there actually people after you, and who are they? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who uh, undervalues uh, the reality of a paranoia in this world, to me, uh, seems just a touch on the faith side. Uh, there is no such thing as paranoia. I've said that for, for years. It's just a matter of ignorance. Uh, the president really is... Uh, what I've said he is. And these things are happening. And uh, I think paranoia is just sort of a, an early warning system. <laughs> I don't recall anything that I uh, that thinks something like Watergate, where you think the worst, and it turns out later that you really just had a bad dream, that the president isn't a crook, really, he just thought he was. And Agnew wasn't sitting in the White House taking wads of ten thousand dollar bills from pay up from uh, people sneaking in the back door <laughs> of the building. That uh, James Watt was not insane. <laughs> I'm already paranoid about James Watt. He beat you every time. You think that he couldn't get any worse than this, my God. Why? He can't sell the nation's cold supply. It's not the question. He can't sell the red wood. <laughs> so hot and so embarrassing, uh, he was going to be dumped. That was a political move. Uh, the, the president never got outraged at James Watt. He was just no longer useful. That thing about Jews, cripples, and uh, whatever, that, uh, I don't think the president was bothered about that. It. <laughs> it, it, it was politically uh, unwise to have Watt around, and so he got more mileage out of fire. But what was uh, an eagle swine? <laughs> yeah, you can. You tell me what might be, what paranoia might uh, exist on these days. Is he still dangerous or has he been pacified? Well, that, that personally, is, uh, I think he's kind of fun these days. <laughs> his Supreme Court is uh, dangerous, yeah. And, and so are Ronald Reagan. He, he uh, gets four more appointees in the next four years. Nixon, Nixon did his damage with the court. That's changed the uh, tribunal of last uh, final appeal in this country. To uh, you know what you're, what's going to happen to the Supreme Court? You don't take any more civil rights cases to the Supreme Court. You don't take any uh, any cases that uh, might be uh, Drano. 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 What's going on? Drano. I don't. I don't. So I, excuse me. Uh, I might. <laughs> Yeah, but 
who's going to cover it fair? I mean, who's going to, who's, you know, who's going to, who's going to play by the American rules and not the administration's? It's a higher calling, Hunter. Well, I think that uh, in the past two weeks, you've seen some of the, uh, the sort of main cogwheels turn. Uh, I noticed the uh, cog or cog. Uh, well, just wheels, cog. I was thinking of there are certain people in the media who sort of speak for the media. And politically, I think of people like uh, David Broder, uh, Anthony Lewis, the people at Brinkley, Chancellor. There, there are certain uh, voices that really say to, to do more than report the news. And I was, yeah, I was despairing myself. I, I noticed that the, after the president a few months ago, I think his last press conference, had spoken twice in a matter of a week about his uh, firm belief in the, uh, in the concept of Armageddon and the book of Revelation. Why he gets excited about the drug problem and Mr. T and the... <laughs> it's a degrading thing to see that bastard in the White House wobbling around. I, I have no quarrel with Ronald Reagan's right to live in Santa Barbara and ride horses or even make uh, stupid uh, and outrageous uh, <laughs> comments on the national uh, political stance. But to see him in the White House is uh, is embarrassing, really. So you can go to the White House and cover it, right? <laughs> I guess the truth is I would if I had to. But only, <laughs> well, it'd be a great thing. You come from politics, you get hung up on it, and you you don't just it, it, you don't just go to the White House once uh, in order to get the proper attitude with them and stance. You sort of have to be around for a while. And it's not enough to go in there and say that, well, I know you're lying or I know you're wrong. It takes a while to achieve that sort of balance with them where they know that they're wrong too. <laughs> and when you see Larry Speaks uh, on TV behind the president in a press conference, uh, standing back over in this wing, for instance, while Reagan is staring out at the uh, 200 reporters in the press room, and the the story on the uh, hunting cars uh, that press thing he does on PBS. They were talking about the White House staffers worrying about the president being just a little bit. Uh, his attention span is not long. And he forgets his own cabinet people's names and people work for him. And that was the the just the, the press of the story. And the, basically, they were saying the staff people have a hard time controlling the president. That's why they don't let him out. The president. And, Behind the behind Reagan, over in this wing, where it was clear that the camera up in that balcony set, and it, it seemed to me that all the rest of the press people saw it, was speaks like pointing at the pointing at the president, but we couldn't see him. And I thought, oh my God, who is in charge? You're the, the, the essentially some sort of a teenage punk who have inherited the job. Uh, from, from Brady, who's never even been appointed press secretary, on national television, giving the giant hook to the president. <laughs> <laughs> not even a single of the president. They could have advised him on his beeper. He, uh, he has a very scroll when he's in front of him. But no, the uh, speech was talking to the cameras. Stop this. Cut this off. Don't let that bastard run anymore. It was shocking. It was like the Joint Chiefs uh, turning in on the president. That's something you don't see. We're seeing signs here that are just not normal. The Secretary of the Navy saying utterly uh, uh, contradictory things. Uh, the President actually abandoning Washington and uttering a different policy from the one where we're sending at the White House, refusing to admit that he's going to cut and run. Uh, this is what, uh, six months, seven months away. Yeah, it may be necessary or it might, it might even be fun to see the, the fall of the House of Reagan. If he, if he did Brought down by his own weight. If, you, uh, if he did it, I think he'd find a lot of uh, anxious readers. Uh, I do already collect a whole bunch of checks here. I get my... <laughs> I need a lot of stimulus to cover that way. We have time for a couple more questions, so we'll go over to this side now. About civility. And ether. <laughs> Maybe you can go, right? Your friend back in the... <laughs> the president is giving us the benefit of his wisdom. 
I do have a question. Um, do you think Jesse Jackson would be an effective running mate uh, for Walter Mondale? <laughs> Uh, only if uh, if Marmdale needs Jackson to uh, if, if Marmdale perceives he needs Jackson to beat uh, Reagan, and for that to happen, Jackson's going to have to bring out a lot of votes and show very strongly not in New Hampshire so much as in the southern states uh, the next primaries. If uh, that's how politics works, if uh, the Monmouth meets Jackson in order to uh, pick up 10% more or win, win five southern states, yes. Uh, I enjoy Jackson. I've, uh, I think he's brought a lot of light to the end thing. And uh, yeah, crunch, I still vote for McGovern. <laughs> but I, I would not be surprised to see uh, Jesse Jackson running with Monmouth. But I wouldn't really anticipate it either, because I don't think that. Bet on it? But I've been against it. Just because I don't think Monday is going to need him at the convention. I don't think the uh, Democratic race is going to turn into a two man uh, <laughs> contest by then, where the 10% of the vote that Jackson could bring to Mondale would be decisive. You bet he'll be there if Mondale needs his 10%, and he can deliver it. I would be there. If I had 10%, I could deliver it. I would be vice president. <laughs> Monday will require he won't be forced to make that deal. It wouldn't bother. I think uh, yeah, that's how politics works. Though anybody who will bring them, uh, as George Bush did in, uh, with, with Reagan, he brought Texas into the fold. He brought some the Eastern Republican money and uh, respectability or patina of it. Yeah, we could see Jesse Jackson as vice president if Monday needs it. And meanwhile, I think Jesse brings a lot of, uh, he elevates the, uh, the, the level of the, the dialogue, as does McGovern, as Grant and Grant Uh <laughs> Afghanistan. As long as, as long as, uh, as long as, uh, as, long as, uh, as, as people like Grant and, and, uh, and Jackson, as I were in the race, it makes the others a little more honest. They can't get away with all the bullshit that they would normally throw at us. And uh, if that, if that sense is very valuable. Okay, um, another question over here. Hunter, let me uh, allow me to set the scene for you. Uh, 1889, President Jesse Jackson has asked you to travel to the Soviet Union and represent America as a goodwill ambassador. I've been bored by the uh, USI. <laughs> and in addition to that, um, you're, he's asked you to head off a nuclear attack on Iran. But, let, let me say one more thing. Uh, Civil Shepherd has asked you, uh, has invited you down to the Bahamas for a week-long coke and fuck party. What will you do? <laughs> I would probably uh, agree to go to Russia and then go to the Bahamas anyway. <laughs> Hollywood scum. Where's the Buffalo Road? Yeah, where's the Buffalo Road? Excuse me, there was a Buffalo Road. Yeah, there was a Buffalo Road. Yeah, there was a Buffalo Road. Yeah, there was a Buffalo Road
that's one. Where's the Buffalo Road? Did you ever want to see any of your other works? Billy Murray. Oh, sorry. <laughs> We'll take the last question from this side. Uh, yes, earlier you mentioned the uh, proverbial carrot and stick in terms of you know, relationship to Granada. Somebody's talking. I know this. <laughs> uh, turning that around a little bit, I was wondering if you consider sex with vegetables sodomy or just good nutrition. <laughs>